reaction, we're looking at an E1 elimination from 2-bromo-3-methyl pentane. Let's take a look at how that happens. So the first step in this E1 reaction is that we lose a Br-, and that happens by two electrons that form this CBr bond get dumped on the bromine. And when that happens, it leaves behind a carbocation. Now, whenever we generate a carbocation, we have to look for the possibility of any 1-2 shifts that would give us more stable carbocations. And in this particular instance, it turns out that if we shift the hydride that's next to it, we go from a secondary carbocation to a tertiary carbocation. And notice how the arrow works here. All right, the arrow starts at the CH bond and ends up on the C+. All right, so we've basically moved an atom over to the right and the charges move over to the left. Now I've redrawn this carbocation showing its natural geometry, the sp2 hybridized trigonal planar, to make it a little bit easier to see how uh, we can lose the proton for the final elimination. So you'll notice that the carbocation has two ethyl groups and one methyl group. So we always have to look at all the groups in order to see how many possible products we can have. In order to find out what eligible proton we can lose, a handy trick is to start at the carbon, at, at, at the carbocation, and then count to two. So if I count to two, one, two, I land on this hydrogen. All right, so this is eligible to, uh, to be lost. And these three hydrogens are on the same methyl group, so they would all give rise to the same product. I'll show you how we can determine the other products that we're going to get by making a double bond to these ethyl groups. But in this particular slide, we are making a double bond to the methyl group. So B here represents a base. In the E1 reaction, uh, the base is not that important because this carbocation is so unstable that even a very, very weak base is going to be able to remove this uh, proton. So the base here, uh, it's usually just a solvent that we're, that we're using in this reaction. Okay, so if we lose this proton, we end up making a double bond between these two carbons. All right, and we're gonna be looking at major and minor products, and the key point there is how many branches does it have? So the branching is counted by any groups that are not hydrogens that are on the carbon-carbon double bond. So I have an ethyl, an ethyl, and then two H's. So I would count each ethyl group as one branch, and that would give me a branching of two. All right, let's take a look at the next product. So in this case, I've redrawn this carbocation, and now the base is coming and grabbing the proton that is on one of the ethyl groups. And again, if I wanted to see which protons are eligible, I would start at the C plus and count to one, two. And that would identify any one of these four hydrogens as being eligible to be lost. All right, the mechanism is the same thing. We make a bond between the base and the H. And then the two electrons that are between this C and H end up between these two carbons here, giving rise to these double bonds. Now in this case, we have the possibility of cis-trans isomers, and so we're going to draw both isomers because we're not going to form one um, a lot more than the other in this case. So the final thing we have to look at is the branching. We have one, two, three branches in each one of these alkenes. So the product that has the, the higher branching number is going to be the major product. So these two would be considered major products in this reaction whereas this alkene that has a branching of two would be the only minor product.